Nine minutes after nine on June 25th, 1996. We're just flying along the uh, south side of St. Andrews Channel towards Iona. We're flying 400 feet and 70 knots. And uh, we're just looking down at Goose Pond, and the remnants of an old barrier. Uh, it was probably much more extensive uh, at some point. Uh, much wider sand deposits offshore, more than we've seen before, and new dune vegetation in the back shore. Uh, very little uh, gravel deposits on Storm Ridge. Well, by this farm, the, the beach was uh, continuous, uh, mostly sand, but there's pebble in it beach. The back shore has a very low erosional scarp or bank, less than, uh, or cliffs less than three meters. Uh, it's vegetated. by another large uh, area called uh, Christmas Island. And the uh, Christmas Island is linked uh, by uh, two large uh, beach ridge complexes. Uh, you see there's several large uh, beach ridges on the, uh, where the trailers were as we come into this uh, uh, narrower barrier, a mixture of sand and gravel. And uh, the, for, the near shore area is mostly sandy. It's controlled by these two uh, headlands, uh, which are primarily uh, consolidated till material, or appear to be. And they're the anchor points for these beaches. Another uh, very large uh, uh, beach ridge complex. Christmas Island was named actually after the Topo uh, people. Uh, they were mapping here a long time ago uh, at Christmas time, so it got its name at that point. Just going by uh, Neiman or Nyman Cove, the railway bridge crosses the front of it. And then we'll be just coming up on the Bear Strait area. Just following the railway towards Grand Narrows and Bear Strait, mostly rip rap, rip rap along the base of the railway. Uh, of course, debris and sand just offshore. And uh, just as we approach Barra Strait, uh, you get a much wider uh, de deposit of material. There's a remnant old barrier. It's very thin now and overwashed, but it, offshore you can see the remnants of the old recurve bridges that used to uh, form a part of the barrier. At Barra Strait, where the tidal currents are uh, two to four knots, uh, very uh, strong. The water depth is about 22 meters. And there's a new bridge in the 1990s. You see the boats. Uh, Bridge, highway bridge is a lift bridge. There's a railway bridge, which is a swing bridge, which doesn't look to be used uh, or left, it's left open anyway right now. And on the inner side of Grand Narrows, you get a fringy beach changing from gravel to sand. And the old ferry uh, launching site uh, at Grand Narrows used to go across to Iona. We're just going by Grand Narrows now. The time is 0914. Unfortunately, the sun angle is not good, but uh, what we are seeing is uh, intermittent uh, higher uh, cliffs uh, partially stabilize the places, and uh, other places you got fringy beach of mostly pebble material. Coming around out of St. Uh, Andrews through Bear Strait, we're just coming up on uh, Dermot's Point, some people call it Derby Point. Uh, there's a uh, I believe a light that now it's just a navigational marker, I guess. Uh, the back shore is up to uh, around 250 uh, feet, so over 60 meters in relief. The, the road is probably about uh, 10 to 15 meters. Those cliffs are probably uh, 8 to 10. It appears to be mostly unconsolidated, but there is bedrock just at the base. And the beach itself is a well, uh, 
well um, sorted uh, pebble material and sand in the lower foreshore and just offshore you got it in a cobble boulder. Now we've got a ramp going along here, a bedrock ramp, sandstone. Uh, the ramp continues offshore, it's irregular, uh, it's smooth in nature. It looks like mostly conglomerate rock, and that's probably where we're getting our uh, uh, small amount of cobble and pebble material. The small pocket beach in this valley, and then as we continue along, we're getting into uh, again uh, a higher relief um, around 60 to 90 meters, coming into Piper's Cove, and mostly bedrock ramp. Irregular to jointed uh, bedrock, it's conglomerate rocks, goes up in a bit of a step in places, and you've got irregular ca caves cut into it, and so on. Very good view of this uh, part of the shoreline. by Piper's Cove, 0917, and uh, flying at uh, about 450 feet. The bear schwa across uh, this pond is uh, primarily uh, sand and fine pebble, and the beach is a uh, continuous fringy beach, sand and pebble again. Then we break back into uh, isolated uh, outcrops of uh, of uh, bedrock, uh, most of that conglomerate rock, and uh, we're now totally into a cliff, a uh, high cliff of about, uh, oh, I guess close to um, 40 meters, 30 to 40 meters. channels in the background and the present channel of the river 
that leads to Benakadi Pond in the foreground. Uh, as we look, turn around and look down towards Benakadi Pond, you see the extent of the wetland and marsh deposits, and you get a good view of the relief of the terrain in the back shore. second, but it, it must be fed by uh, material from these cliffs. A sense of gully all through here must be finer material, scattered uh, boulders in the near shore. O924 and they're flying 480 knots. This bare schwa is mostly pebble in, in the very near shore and then switch into a sand body uh, uh, farther offshore. Again, cliffs uh, back, mostly unconsolidated, but looking at the base of it, there's bedrock uh, in the, at the base of the cliff. by a, a, a Magadis Pond, uh, which is an angling area, and uh, the hope is to develop uh, quite an angler's uh, paradise in this area. You've got quite an extensive barrier cutting across the, the front of uh, Magadis Pond, mostly sand, uh, dune grass. Looks like an old opening or washover where they put up uh, a uh, cobble boulder deposit. Then as we come into this side of Magadagas Pond, Magadis Pond, you've got uh, what look to be old beach ridges where the trees are, and it's a progradational feature, fairly wide. Uh, sand and pebble in the near shore, 
and it looks like be an old wharf uh, structure or something in the water just at this end where the opening is uh, into the pond. We're just entering into the Eskasoni uh, Indian Reservation. Uh, as you see, the uh, Magadiz Pond, there'll be an area uh, that was very good for angling because of the connection to the sea. And uh, we'll just cut around and uh, cut around, of, uh, around the pond. You can see the um, back shore of the pond is wetland, uh, very shallow. And you get a good view now of... Uh, of the bear show in front of it and the uh, the cliff area, the back side of the cliff. This is the castle, sometimes called the Castle Bay Beach area or Castle Bay. If you get some of the uh, residences in the foreground, uh, Dave, uh, of the Castle Bay settlement. See the relationship to the bear show. It's a very beautiful uh, beach out in front. Uh, it's uh, partially tree, there's an island in behind. Uh, again, there's some wetland vegetation uh, at the base. And then uh, we'll just cut back out to the other coast. There's a good long view looking down at Mogadish Pond or Castle Bay Beach. The tree shores on the inner shore. Um, it's a bit of a relief uh, there. We're just heading along the outer shore right now. It's an extensive cliff uh, that anchors this beach. There's a track right along the uh, barrier. View of Castle Bay Beach, uh, Castle Bay Beach now. Time is 0929. Then we go back into a higher um, uh, cliff area. Uh, consolidated materials, uh, very fine uh, grained. Uh, Windsor group underlies this. Um, there appears to be some bedrock at the base of it. It's uh, very sandy in the near shore. Going by Christmas Pond. This barrier again is primarily sand, it does have some pebbles and it's wide open at the far end although there's an extensive shoal that extends off of the spit. Uh, we didn't quite see it but that uh, extends over to a small island uh, just offshore. There's two uh, inlets or bays uh, just along here. One is uh, connected by a bridge opening. I think we just passed the uh, mouth of Christmas Brook, but we're entering Eskasoni, uh, the outskirts, and the shoreline is very low-lying, a uh, bit of a fringy beach, extensive shallow water offshore. Uh, you see a fair bit of new development. Uh, it looks like a new school here, a small outlet of a stream there. Um, very wide shoals offshore in this area. A few artificial structures, uh, like groins or um, 
boat launch in sights. And uh, we're just coming up to a very wide, flat area, part uh, the most of the Indian Brook. Extensive deposits, so some of them have been molded into barrier ridges uh, or beach ridges on either side of it. And there's the mouth right there with extensive sand deposits and some uh, more beach development as well on the eastern side of the delta. It's tree ridges and uh, then some more artificial structures. There's an ephemeral inlet there as well. This is uh, Harriet's spawning area. Uh, well known to the Eskasoni Indians, uh, some of this area actually uh, yeah, is uh, a lobster, as we'll see in the West Eskasoni Harbor. But it, it's a, it's quite a uh, intricate shoreline. Uh, it's uh, high cliffs that you're starting to see now. Uh, fine materials over uh, looks to be bedrock at the base, and the offshore is uh, scattered uh, boulders. And then in the inner shore is uh, quite protected uh, and it, they're all linked to all these little islands called Indian Islands so we're just coming into the uh, West Eskasoni Harbor where there's good lobster uh, ground actually we'll see how many traps we see but uh, we're going to cut across uh, the harbor for the now but we'll pick up the other part of the harbor as we go around it I don't see a lot of traps at the moment, but each one of these islands is joined by a uh, narrow uh, barrier beach, and I would guess that each island is probably bedrock controlled. Fee Island is one of several of the Indian islands. The area all in behind uh, the Indian islands is uh, Perry's spawning ground, a very beautiful setting. As we approach the end of McTee Island, we get a really good view looking back at the double tombola that is uh, built out or into the embayment from this island. Uh, very extensive beach deposits. And you can see at the outer end of McTee Island a wider fringing beach, uh, some dune development in the back shore. The key is this wide shoal that extends off McTee Island, which is probably the remnants of the old island. There's some erosional uh, and consolidated cliff at the end. And this seems to be feeding the uh, distal end of the island, creates the recurve bridges on land, and the uh, spit progradation and development at the underneath the water at the uh, end of the spit. As we swing around, you'll get a good view of this wide shoal, or at least a shallow shore face that extends off from the Fee Island. And you get a good view looking across at the south side of the east. Day. Traveling along the inner side of McPhee Island, uh, there's shallow water deposits, but very little beach development. Um, maybe low erosional cliffs in the background, it's hard to tell, but this island would feed these tombolos or uh, beaches that extend off the back side of McPhee Island. It's extensive sand deposits on the inner side of this tombolo. We're just cutting across uh, one of the larger barriers uh, that protects the area. There's a, 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 a net going across here that could be for the herring spawning uh, area or fishing. And as we cut across, uh, we're heading in, heading in towards uh, Eskasoni. Time is 0934. Uh, that's one of the small islands. The, the inner shore here is a uh, partially scarped uh, three to five meter back shore. Very little beach in around the treed areas. Uh, and then there's a shallow uh, area just in uh, near shore and then it, it deepens. coming into Eskasoni, uh, the Eskasoni uh, Indian Band office is here and uh, we'd like to say uh, uh, that uh, one of the major users of this video will be the uh, the band council and the Eskasoni uh, Fish and Wildlife Group who have guardians who are watching the lake uh, and seeing how the management structure is going on. 
just going into Eskasoni now. This is the main part of the town. And the, the inner bay is quite um, protected, very little beach. Um, just getting a good view of Eskasoni and the, uh, the situation, uh, the geographic situation is protected by a, uh, an island just offshore at least from uh, the west. Circling back along in the Crane Cove, we'll, we'll be going by the uh, Eskensoni Fish and Wildlife Office. circle around uh, and get another view of that um, a section of uh, Eskasoni that we dismissed. Come down the other coast to get a view looking down the Indian Islands. There we're getting a view of Eskasoni again, and uh, we'll just uh, carry on along C Crane Cove uh, towards um, uh, the Sydney area. I think we're just looking at the office now. This whole area is um, area spawning ground. Um, it's sort of deep waters in uh, the inner part as we come across a Long Island view. Uh, it's at Talus uh, Shore. It looks like it's been quarried in the backside. You can see it there. beach is not well developed because it's protected by the Indian Islands. There's intermittent uh, residences uh, and wharves all along this shore. It's dense of uh, um, old wharf structures. There's buoys just offshore for anchorages. And um, the beach itself is uh, sand and pebble. It's a low erosional scarp cliff in the back, less than a meter high probably, and then the near shore area is all very low-lying um, or, or very shallow uh, muds, and some of it's uh, quite uh, heavily vegetated. We're going to make a uh, broad uh, circle at the end of the Indian Islands. It's uh, 9.40. Uh, and we're looking down towards Sydney at the moment. Uh, we're at 400 feet and it's uh, 09.40 hours. We'll come in across, uh, you'll get another view of McPhee. We'll be looking at the far side of East Bay right now, over towards um, Porphyry Point and Marble Point. Area off McPhee, uh, 
island is very shallow, uh, it looks to be sandy, there's a lot of, uh, looks like eelgrass or, uh, or vegetated patches. We're just going by that large barrier again.